Alrighty, well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody, and cast time once again. And um, this is gonna be kind of a kind of a rushed cast. Um, I I currently have a previous video I made uploading right now. It's fully uploaded to YouTube. Um, after it did the copyright checks, no issues were found. So it looks like as of right now, this um, what I'm gonna play here is a green light. So, but like I said, at least as of right now, uh, I think there was something in the description about some of these being copyrighted, but um, one, I'm just really into this kind of music right now, and two, I don't really feel like going around and trying to cherry pick something that isn't copyrighted, so same reason I said for my last video. But anyway, um, as as it shows here, Doom Radio beats to rip and tear to, just rip and tear until it is done. My piss poor deep voice here. Oh, let me out. Okay, so I, I, but sorry if that's offensive. I'm like I said, I'm not playing this to piss people off. I'm just playing just because it's what I'm into. I mean, even even with my all-time favorite kinds of music, I don't like to listen to them 24/7 or anything. So, so yeah, this isn't this isn't anything unique. I mean, just don't care to. I mean, some music I really love, but even then, I don't like to listen to it all the time. So, otherwise, um, things I did today, not much. Just, um, up until recently, it was pretty, um, pretty un uneventful, unproductive. Just basically sat on my ass and watched various stuff. Um, I also got a little too heavy with the junk food. And yeah, I'm a junk food junkie. It, and, and, you know, it's already, um, it's already causing problems. I got a, I think, I think last Friday, last Friday, um, as a sort of kind of Christmas present, we were all given a, two free pizzas and a pop and a two liter bottle of pop. So, and, and you know, and that, you know, I think um, I said this in my, um, my um, political questionnaire video. I think um, I had addicts People with addictions are also opportunists. You know, I mean, you know, I've been um, and I've actually known, I've actually known druggies throughout my life too, and that's how they work. Free drugs are good drugs. You know, I mean, even if they're bad, they're as long as they're free, they're good. You know, that's that's how they work. You know, even if the pot or the LSD or whatnot was terrible, they didn't they didn't care much. I mean, it was free. So I'm pretty much like that too with junk food. I mean, you know, as long as, you know, if, it, if it's free junk food, hell yeah, I'm taking it, even though I already have a serious problem with it anyway. But hey, you know, if, if mommy wants to give me a bunch of cook, give me a bag of or a bag of chocolates, hell yeah, I'll take it. I mean, it's very hard for me to say no to, especially when it's family. Um, and then I played a fair amount of Gems of War, um, mostly PvP. Again, I, somewhere towards the evening, I just quit, just kind of took a break from it, and again, just started, uh, doing my usual slobbing and watching stuff. Again, all this, all this, all this went on until, uh, until recently when, when 2 a.m. hit about an hour, about an hour and a half ago. When all the dailies reset, got on that. It's uh, it's something I've been um, it's something I've been doing recently in Gems of War, on my nights off, kind of splitting the load. Just uh, doing, doing uh, probably doing like uh, some of the dailies or the ones that uh, the ones that take a while to do. Yeah, the ones that take a while to do, doing them like in the morning, getting them done and taken care of, and then during my stream. Getting the rest of the dailies taken care of, so, and then just going on to PvP or whatever else. So. 
Okay, I have to do something here real quick. I totally forgot. I had a feeling that was going to happen. Forgot to add that in earlier. So anyway, um, one thing, oh, one thing I did do last night. Um, got on Fight Cave, tried to get that going. And Fight Cave, it, works kind of wonky like like they don't the fight cade itself doesn't have any games we're all about emulation not private or not piracy which is you know kind of dumb it's kind of like batteries not included you know you know that kind of thing you know you buy hey i got hey they got flashlights here let's buy one and oh wait i gotta i gotta buy batteries too it's kind of fucking stupid you know i mean these days i mean you know Stuff like flashlights do already come with batteries. You know, but I mean, you, you get the idea, though. It's kind of dumb. I mean, I get it. You know, they're anti-piracy, but, you know, you're already you're already giving away the software that makes piracy possible. You, you might as well just go all the way instead of just, uh, you know, being all hush-hush. Oh, we don't do piracy, but again, you got software that, that enables it. It's just kind of dumb. So anyway, like I said, I I tried uh tried getting you know I my previous attempt I tried getting some games going. Um, when I first looked at some of the stuff you could download, I'm like holy shit! I thought it was just uh I mean the name Fight Kid. I thought it just had fighting games, but damn, it's got some like arcade games that I loved the hell out of back in the '90s and 2000s. So yeah, I downloaded the ROMs on that, but I couldn't get them to work. Just for one reason or another. Bunch of, you know, bunch of errors, um, invalid ROMs, required ROMs, you know, stuff like that. It just got real super frustrating. Well, I'm uh, taking a drink of Arizona green tea here. Hold on. But yeah, man, it's too bad, too. I really wanted to play these games. It'd be one hell of a trip down memory lane. Because uh, all these... I mean, a lot of these arcade games, I played the living hell out of them. I mean, but again, but also, as, as stated in some of my videos about fighting games, um, there were a few that I played back in the 90s, but again, when, uh, when I played them, I got there, I got... I got there at the arcade right when the place opened up. So that way, so nobody else was there. This would mean I'd have a, I had to have free reign on these games. You know, I wouldn't have to worry about some, some jock alpha male asshole coming in and kicking my ass and, you know, beating my ass worse than the computer ever could. You know, running me off the damn thing. In fact, uh, this, this might take me a little while to put to get piece together, but uh, Corey Gaming, it's a fighting game YouTube channel. Their um, latest episode, Holders vs. Innovators, um, I guess, I don't know if this is a joke or not, but after uh, after all the Street Fighter 3s were made, I forgot his name, but the, the main developer of Street Fighter, he was actually gonna, he actually wanted to make uh, his fourth one, kind of an RPG type, like a turn-based RPG of Street Fighter. Because uh, he kind of said the same thing that I complained about too, or not that in and of itself is a bad thing, but for when I'm when I'm when I'm on the receiving, receiving when I'm on the receiving end of this, it's not so fun, not so much fun. But people got too good at these games, just you know, playing them so damn much they were all freaking masters. But then some some newbie guy like me comes in, you know, just wanting to have a you know. Have a fun, you know, have a fun time playing the game, and then this jock alpha male asshole, I, I'm the greatest fighting game player, in my, you know, comes in and just, you know, blows me off the damn game, you know. You know, but I, like, it's like, I, you know, I've been saying the same thing too. I mean, you know, ever, 
you know, they're all, all these people, like, during peak hours and stuff like that, are all playing against each other, you know, playing these games way more often than I ever could, and again, I, I, I keep forgetting to say this, too, um, when it comes to arcades, I play video games the same way I play pinball, I make the rounds, I don't play one single table over and over and over and over and over and over again, I'll, um, I'll play this one table, put in one credit, go on one play, after it's over, go on to the next table, I did this with arcade games, too, um, few exceptions, um, Super Puzzle Street Fighter 2 Turbo or something like that. That was probably one of the rare games that I played over and over and over, but again, all other games, I just, I played them once and went on to the next one. So I didn't play, I didn't play fighting games over and over and over and over like all these other people did. So, but yeah, it's too bad. Too bad I couldn't get these games going. And um, and I, I did look into it. I did a, did a few Google searches. I went on Discord, um, and the verdict and all of it. Um, it sounds to me like you have to download other programs in order to make this program work. Which I kind of have a, I kind of have a personal policy on this. If I have to download another program just to make a, this one program work I don't I don't mess with that program I don't trust them you know I think um, some of the places I've looked at said the same thing these often contain viruses you know spyware or whatnot and it kind of goes along with my uh, same complaint about the batteries not included bullshit you know if a if a flashlight needs batteries then the battery should come with the flashlight I shouldn't have to buy the shit separate and I'm pretty sure that's a that's been a big time complaint ever since I'm ever, ever probably ever since I was born, like in the 70s. You know, I'm, you know, lots of other people complaining about the same thing. You know, if something requires batteries, just they should have the battery should come with the device. You know, and then to me, computer program, you know, program should be the same way. I should be able to download everything I need to make the damn thing run right then and there. And not have to go around and chase another program that's required to run it. It's a bunch of bullshit. So. But anyway, like I, so, basically, Fightcade is a no-go. I'll still pick a polecat in here from time to time, but I'm not going to do anything real serious about it. You know, I'm not going to delve too deeply until I'm, it's too much trouble. I mean, as much as I would love to play some of these games, the trouble you'd have to go through isn't worth it. Okay, um, one other thing, and I already messed that up. Okay, so doing what I usually do, um, Check it out articles from Jessica Wildfire. <laughs> I, I saw I did, there is no way I could I can make this smaller. But <laughs> I saw this. This is freaking hilarious. <laughs> this is a this is a this is an actual worker strike. Um Kellogg's workers, they're they've organized a labor strike, and um, I guess this was their poster. <laughs> that thought was freaking hilarious. There's actually another one I saw on Google Images of this. I thought it was freaking awesome. I think more uh, more strikers ought to do this. Just make these uh, funny posters, and not just have it in like, like straight up black and white, you know, picket signs. You know, it's just too generic. But stuff like this. They're great. Oh, and that crap. I wish there was an option to turn that off. But I'm not going to go too in-depth into this, but there's just another article I read. Um, Kellogg's the new poster child of corporate greed. And this is something else, too. 
you know, it's why, uh, it's why, uh, whenever somebody mentions a shitty job, I always die a little inside. It just, no, you know, I mean, some, you know, some jobs you don't, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but there's probably a few jobs that you can, you can probably do just fine without waitresses come to mind. I mean, you, I mean, no, you could, you know, you could just have your restaurant be like a all-you-can-eat buffet. Actually, no, scratch that, scratch that. Yeah, you do need waitresses in some form. So, yeah, I'll... I'm, again, I'm kind of going off the top of my head here. But, you know, those uh, shitty jobs that people talk about, like stocking groceries, hell, I remember back in the day, um, I got my first grocery store job back in the late 80s. That's what they were... Um, back in those times, uh, people will bag your groceries, uh, people will stock groceries for you. They, we were just considered the help. <laughs> Not anymore these days. They're singing us. They're singing. I mean, they're singing our. They're praising us to the high heavens. So, you know, us, you know, us stockers that are keeping the product on the shelves for them because you know they all got to be under lockdown because of COVID. So, kind of poor. We have the stuff out there for them. hospitals with nurses my kids like cereal and it also also um one of my all-time favorite books that i often mention in almost every cast strong towns um one of the uh, last chapters one of the last chapters i thought was one of my favorites called celebrate maintenance you know we need to treat the you know the people that fill the potholes the rope maintenance people you know the building maintenance people you know, we need to be giving these guys a lot more respect than we're giving them. And it's kind of, it's kind of really showing too. Again, a lot of people are on strike. You know, you know, if they're on strike, you know, you're gonna have a hell of a time getting to work because the potholes are gonna screw up your car. You know, you know that kind of thing. You know, things that a lot of people take for granted. He actually had a chapter of this in his book though, which I thought was fucking awesome. You know, it. You know, maintenance plays a much greater role in running, you know, in running a society than people give credit for. You know, again, oftentimes they're just seen as the help. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's the uh, people like that that really, really keep things going. I mean, you know, the people that, you know, the architects, you know, the ones that, uh, ones with the building plans, the ones that want to make you know making plans for a new new skyscraper or whatever it, to me they don't mean shit and I said this in my uh in my political questionnaire yesterday the inmates can run the asylum you know especially especially since we've been on the receiving end of their bullshit for for so long we already know what doesn't work I mean work because we're the ones actually doing the work so we already know we could probably we could be some pretty damn good builders ourselves, you know. You know we could probably run the city. I mean, granted, you know we'd have you know, we probably have to take like some kind of city management course to learn you know some of the technical aspects. But you know, hardly any hardly any of us uh, blue collar and maybe some white collar people, hardly any of us would out there that wouldn't know how to run a city or run a country. So. Yeah, and I'll go ahead and highlight this as well. We play a much greater role than people realize. Yup, yup. And I'm gonna try to cut this short, but like I said, some of this stuff's really catching my eye. Competitive salary and flexible hours. Um, in the Burger King, right by where I live. They had they had it painted right on their front window, um, starting fifteen dollars an hour. That's actually a ripoff. People actually were, people actually were um, were uh, trying to apply to that place, only to find out later that, oh, that's only if you're a manager. You have to. So I think it was something like that. Oh, that's only that. Those are management wages, but you can't be a manager right away. You have to have been a cashier for at least a year, and you have to go through training, et cetera, et cetera. But basically. These are all ripoffs to rope people into the job, so. 
Corporations consume your tax money. Yup. Yeah. Oh, damn. That's, um... Uh... Oh god, that sounds like uh, the original Doom, the original classic Doom. I don't know the name of it, but uh, there was a, there was a bonus level. There was a bonus level on Doom, Doom Two, the second one. There was a bonus level that had this music. But yeah, I. I seldom buy stuff on Amazon, so... Yep, yep. Um... But I think, considering, um... Considering the obesity problem we have in this country, um, I said this in my uh, questionnaire video yesterday too. It's it's not the food in and of itself that's killing us. It's the processed food that's killing us. It's the processed part. You know. So, but good luck trying to tell. You know, good luck trying to get people off this stuff. Yeah, I saw this too. You know, because I'm sure a lot of people out there buy these kind of products in one way or form, in some st in some shape or form. So you could tell you could tell them to do this, but you know, people are again. There's a lot. There's a lot of junk food addiction out there, including myself. I mean, you know, I think the most you could do is at least make them aware of this. You know. You can. There's things you can do without soapboxing. Again, I'm not a fan of it. You know, when people started preaching to me, I find it annoying, and I really have to bite my tongue to tell them to just, you know, shut the fuck up. You're preaching to the choir. You know, you know, you know. Talk to these people over here that actually are buying the products. I mean, so. Yup. Yup. Something else I've said too. Um, could, you know, it's something I set up my, at all, at, especially at Walmart, the one, the place where I work at now, you know, managers, I, I want to say through no fault of their own, but it's, it, for a while we had a store manager that was one of the worst that we've ever worked for, along with, I think he brought along one of his, um, one of his sub-managers. Uh, it was a night. He was a night manager. One of the worst I've ever worked for. Um, what they don't seem to realize is that treating your, you know, us employees, we have friends and relatives that we can talk to, or that we talk to. So, treating employees like crap. If you treat somebody like crap, they're gonna go tell their friends and relatives about what a shitty job that he works at. I'm pretty sure that all of his friends and relatives are gonna steer clear of Walmart. So, for the longest time, we were short-staffed. They, um, I think they started up. They started offering more money, and because of that, more people started showing up. So yeah, we're we got a fair amount of new hires now. But yeah, like it, the strikes, they work. But in order to really do it, you have to get a whole bunch of people involved. And in our case, in our store, indirectly, again, we were super short staffed. Nobody to want to work for our store because. Because for a while, for the longest time, us employees were treated like crap. And you know, and all it's gonna take, all it's gonna take is uh, one of their friends or relatives. How is work? Fucking shitty. This managers here are a bunch of goddamn assholes. I'm quitting the first chance I get. Fuck that place. Fuck Walmart. Oh, don't ever get a job there, man. It sucks. All those friends and relatives are gonna hear that. They ain't gonna work there. So, so in a sense. At our store, we kind of did our own version of striking, and we did it passively. 
we didn't get on a soapbox, we didn't stand in a park a lot with picket signs. I mean, again, I'm not a proselytizer, I'm not a preacher. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there that are like it as well. Should you do your part? Yeah. And how am I doing mine? Well, by talking about stuff like this on my cast video. I mean, to me, in my mind, that works too. Newspapers don't cover labor strikes and rare exceptions. They'll talk about work conditions. Yep. 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 Um, I'm pretty sure, at least at some point in my life, I have probably seen a, a newspaper article or two that talked about labor strikes, but not very many. You're far more likely to talk. You're far more likely to talk about how how bad things they are. Yep. <laughs> but, um, but again, this is something that I'd never say to somebody else. Because, you know, and, you know, being a junk poo junkie myself, um, and, you know, being around, being around so many other addicts throughout the years, you can't, you can't cure, you can't fix somebody's addiction by just taking away what they're addicted to. I mean, I was doing it for the longest time when I, when I went on my weight loss campaign, going from 210 pounds to 140. All that time was basically food denial. And it, and it basically culminated in me going into a massive week-long junk food binge. So food denial, you know, outright denying yourself food doesn't work. You know, so again, I mean, Again, this is something I wouldn't, you know, I'd never say this to somebody. So, if anything, it just pisses them off even more, making them less likely to want to do anything about it. So, it was one of the reasons why I, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm borderline obese now, but I was actually a lot worse back in the day, because I got tired of, you know, one of the reasons why I stayed so fat was, I got tired of, you know, people telling me, man, you're going to get diabetes and all this other stuff. It gets annoying. So... Okay, so, okay, so, this cast here has pretty much gone on like a little bit over long, almost 30 minutes now, so, I was actually wasn't expecting it to go on this long, I was expecting this to just be a quick short one, so, but didn't happen that way, so, but otherwise, um, I'll just go ahead and end it here, like I said, I still have another previous video that's uploading right now, I still have that to get taken care of, so, so, still gonna be pretty busy so, but otherwise hey thanks for uh thanks for tuning in and listening to me everybody i appreciate that and i should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning so but until then thanks again for coming by everybody and see you all next time bye for now hopefully it'll be a shorter one <laughs>